Caroline. Where did you go? It's been a while. Today we're going to have a look at how important a good sounding room is when you're recording. Um, anytime you're recording anything, you're sticking a microphone in a room and you're capturing not only your source, but the sound of that room. Um, and I think that's um, most important when you're recording drums. You want a good sounding, big, open room um, to record your drums in. So we've set up our kit here at the studio in a few different places um, just to show how different the exact same setup can be in a, in a different room. So I'm working with my mate Brad Coleman. Um, who laid down the groove for us. So this is, this is Brad playing the groove in our drum room here at the studio. So to me, I think that's a pretty natural sound. Um, there's, it's nice and open, um, it's controlled, there's no frequencies that are really um, sticking out offensively. We've still got the close mics on there, so they're coming through in the mix as well. But we've got those um, ribbon overheads and the AT4050 as the room mic. So um, next we moved the whole kit, um, exact same setup, I didn't touch the faders on the desk, um, into our vocal booth. So this is a very closed in space, there's lots of um, absorptive material on all the walls and you'll hear straight away the same setup same settings um just it's smaller it's boxier it's a bit bassier have a listen to this in the vocal booth It's a much different sound. And when we first listened back to that, Brad loved that room. Um, he loved that sound. You can hear his snares tuned quite low. So that sort of um, boomy, deep, close sound he really liked. And yeah, it does sound cool. Um, I think you might run into troubles if you wanted to get like a big, if you were recording like a big rock groove or something, you wanted to kind of open that sound out. I think you'd have a lot of trouble with that space. You'd have to add reverbs and sort of artificial space to it. Um, to get that and why it's quite controlled yeah you might be able to pull it off it's going to be difficult though um, next to show you the other extreme we moved the kit out into a cafe um, and so this was a big open space absolutely no absorptive material whatsoever um, and have a listen to this how that sounded And same thing, when we first listened back to that, we're like, that is awesome, that sounds so cool. And it probably would as an effect, um, but it kind of reminded me, the more I listened to it, of, of just recording drums in crappy rooms. And um, when I was at uni in the little basement thing I was recording in, or um, when I was working out of my bedroom, just that, that open, out of control sound. Um, once you actually get into mix and you, you want to actually bring hone that sound in and, and do something with it, it's very, very hard. Um, you kind of, I remember just putting the slightest fade up just so that you can barely hear the cymbals, but just enough of kind of the overhead mics because anything more than that, it was just harsh and offensive and really hard to control. So yeah, it just makes such a difference. So I want to show you now all those, I've, I've lined them all up together. So um, quickly go between them and just have a listen to how different the rooms are um, back to back. Um, what I might do actually is I'll solo just the rooms and overheads. So I'll take the close mics off for this one.
you can see quite a big difference there when you solo the rooms. Um, same drummer, same setup, same settings, um, just a different space. Um, so it really kind of highlights the importance of a room. Um, one thing that we can kind of do, um, and a lot of people do, um, to kind of alleviate this um, drum problem is to use drum samples, um, which is good, but you've still got the same problem. It's like your close mics aren't really the problem as much as your room and your room mic. So what I've done here is I've replaced um, all of Brad's drumming here with um, some samples um, to, sh to illustrate how much the room still plays. So this is, this is just the samples of Brad's close mic. So you can hear that there's no vibe in that. You can't use that. Yeah, it's, it's a well-recorded sample, but you're still going to have to bring in your overheads um, and your kind of ambience and able to be able to use that sound. So I'll play it again and I'll bring in the overheads. All of a sudden, we've got a usable sound. I mean, without that, Brad's doing lots of little ghost notes. Um, none of those are coming through. Um, with the overheads and the rooms, they're picking up all those little ghost notes. Um, no, that's a pretty good sounding kit. I think you'd be able to get away with with using those samples instead of the close mics, but you're not going to be able to get away with using a rubbish room and samples because it's still going to sound um, really harsh and out of control. So um, same thing, I'm going, to, I'm going to use those drum samples um, with the overheads and sh in all those rooms like we did before, and you'll still hear um, totally beat replaced sample hits um, in different rooms and how different a sound you're still going to get. That's it. That's the example. So we we had a lot of fun putting this together, and um, yeah, if you want if you want a good sounding recording, I think you need a good sounding drum kit. Um, and if you want a good sounding drum kit, you need a good sounding room. So if you want to make your recordings bigger, bolder, um, more open, I yeah, get into a good drum drum room. It'll really make a big difference. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we'll see you again soon.